Well, I think it was great for us, uh, especially guys that had little bumps and bruises or some injuries. Uh, Serge, uh, hopefully we get him back tonight. Um, obviously, some more time with JV. I, we know we have some time for him before he comes back. But uh, so also, everybody else that had bumps and bruises. You know, Kalo is back, just coming back. And just, you know, a mental break. So it was big uh, for that uh, aspect of the game. Do you break it down the season in terms of the before Christmas and after Christmas to all-star break? Then do you segment the season like that? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I think some guys do, depending on, I think some teams, some coaches do. It's probably best to do it that way. Um, as you get older, you kind of, you know, trying to stay healthy for the whole season. So I guess the best way to do that is to take it game by game, but, you know, segment by segment. Um, so I guess it's something I probably should start doing. But, you know, right now is a, it's a good little stretch. We want to make a, a good push before All-Star break. Um, you know, hopefully we can play a good month of basketball and then, um, you know, get everybody healthy. This team Miami is, is uh, one of those hard physical playing teams. What do you guys have to do to kind of just get control of this game early? They're playing well right now. Obviously, they're on a win streak. Um, they're you know, do, crashing the glass very hard. We have to do a better job. We have to do a really good job of getting them, you know, off the glass, keep them off the opposite board, and you know, you know starting starting out physical, like you said. Uh, so, you know, hitting them for, first, making the initiative of, of say, tagging people and not letting them get to the glass. Uh, if we do that, I think that'll help us a ton if we can try to control the backboard. I felt good, you know. Obviously, uh, people, you know, having your family around and and just kind of getting away from basketball a little bit. I mean, I know some some people work out and stuff, but. You know, I think it's just important, you know, not not being, not playing any games and, 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 you know, just just being with your family and hanging out and having a good time. You know, I have my family around, so it's definitely special for me. You know, a lot of people talk about this time of the season between Christmas and the All-Star break and trying to make a push and trying to stay focused. Is that something you guys really focus on? Um, I mean, yeah, of course. You know, I think we have a lot of, you know, professionals on the team and guys are in the same, you know, a lot of vets. I mean, especially for us, we, we kind of understand a little bit. I mean, it's not that much experience, but we... we Kind of know how last year how it went and, and, and things like that. So um, we just want to continue to stay stay focused. You know, yesterday we had a little some runs and then, you know playing a little bit and then just to, to make sure that we keep our rhythm. This team Miami it just doesn't have the star power it used to have, but it's one of those teams that physically really play a tough mm-hmm. kind of game. What do you guys have to do to kind of um, that early? Yeah, it's always been a tough game. You know, every time we play them, you know, they they are gonna play hard every possession and they're gonna play hard to the end of the game. So um. Um, just got to keep our focus, you know, uh, bring the intensity because, like I said, they're going to play hard. They're going to um, they're gonna give you 110% every time. So um, we definitely need our, that, our energy and focus. When you talk about that focus, is it hard at this time of year or is it kind of like it's over now? And- I, mean, I, I mean, I think it should be over, you know. Um, I guess we'll see tonight. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, having families around, obviously, I mean, it's fun for me. I think it's fun. And, and guys enjoy that, and you know, at the end of the day, when it's game time, it's game time. You know, and the rest is, is just the, all the, the, the little distractions. You know, out of, the, out of the question. Are you surprised at all that nobody seems to have slowed down to this point? Like when you look around the league or around the East, specifically, mm-hmm. Philly's still coming, mm-hmm. Boston's now coming on strong, Milwaukee's still rolling. I mean, you guys still doing your thing. Like, this thing's turned into a real dog. Fight. Yeah, man, it, it will be a dog fight. You know, and I think it'll be, it's, it's, it makes it makes you know the league just that much better. I think. Either side, the West or the East, you know, guys are competing at a higher level, and, and you know, the, the amount of talent, you know, out there is also, you know, impressive. So it, it's definitely fun. It's definitely a fun, fun time to be to be in the league and you know, and, and, and playing. We'll, we'll be ready to go. Last night they were they were sharp in practice last night, and we'll be ready to go. How much of a focus is it this, this period of the season? You know, between Christmas and the All Star break, yep. where there's some dog days in there where you want to keep guys locked in. How important is it? Well, it's, it's seemingly a little bit more important for us as we get some guys back from injury, right? Um, we got a couple couple more guys back tonight, I think, and uh, Serge is healthy and looking good, and and uh, Danny Danny wasn't quite right in Philly the other night, even though he gave it a go. So he's he's again also feeling better. So you know, I think for us, we're just we're just hoping to get our team together so we can see what they look like as as one unit here. I mean, um, and. I, you know, as I, as I kind of look back at the first 35, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pleased at the progress we've made. You know, I've told you guys before, maybe a month or so ago, we probably had about 65% of our defensive stuff in. Well, that's that's grown a lot here in the last month. You know, we're probably more in the 85 to 90% range. We've worked on our double teaming and 
blitzing the screen and rolls. We've the zones come out a little bit more. We've we've thrown a few different other coverages defensively in, and, and we're we're trying to do that to give ourselves a a wide a wide menu that we can pick from if and when we need it. Um, so again, I'm pretty happy with the growth. I think there's more to come, and and uh, we just want to get our healthy bodies on the floor so we can build some chemistry and, and continue to grow. What do you think of the Heat throwing out a bunch of zone? They haven't really done that in the past. The, you know, there's a lot of teams playing a lot more zone this year, um, and uh, yeah, it's been been really successful for them. They I think they rode it for about the last six minutes of the game against Milwaukee, and. Um, uh, treated them well. Obviously, they, they had a great win against Milwaukee here, and uh, yeah, we're going to have to be ready for that tonight. I'm sure we're going to see uh, on and off, and then maybe some extended periods of it. You guys play yours, Nick. How much do you practice? I mean, practice against it, like the school of thought. Is yeah, play it and practice against. Well, that's that's the one thing about playing zone uh, when you're when you got one in, and we you know we've had one in since uh, the early days of the preseason. I think we played it in our second game against Utah in the preseason. It's the first time we broke it out, but. That's one of the things co coaches say. It's it's a good defense to have because coaches don't like to practice against it. So um, it, it's it's a small amount compared to what how you yeah. practice everything else. So it's it's part of its effectiveness, I think. Does it take any convincing to get guys to play zone? Uh, a little Does bit, guys yeah. I mean, we, we get into some debates in the coaching huddles at the timeouts, you know, like, you know, I'll be trying to change it just for change sake sometimes or just to take a ATO play away and and uh, my assistants will battle me on it a lot of times, you know, hey, we got three stops in a row, why would we change now and things like that. And uh, um, I don't know, I just hope you can do both well. I, I think I think we have. I, I went and did check the numbers and our zone's been outstanding. You know, we've only used it uh, sporadically. So that's helped, right? We haven't tried to overuse it and uh, let teams get a rhythm against it. Uh, I think it's like .77 or something, PPP, which is unbelievable, right? But um, uh, what we did in Philadelphia that hurt us is we we were matched up great, and then we kind of forgot to play the rest of the defense. We forgot to guard, you know, guard, <laughs> we forgot to use our man-to-man -man principles while we were while we were after we were matched up, and they uh, got into the paint on us a little bit, but. Um, I could see us, you know, continuing to develop it. Flip side all that too, why do you think it seems to baffle so many teams when you actually go to it or when it's done against you? Well, I think the first thing is, is, is like, um, you either want a super quick shot, you know, they come down and they think they're going to try to beat it real quick and, and they miss that one and it's like, ah, oh, you know, we didn't even look at anything and, and we had a couple of those in Philly too. Um, even with the little little three-quarter court press we put on, they came down and, and hoisted up a couple quick shots that missed. So that makes that effective. Or you want them to stand around and look at it at the beginning. And, you know, a lot of times they come out with a man-to-man -man play called out of a timeout and, and they see it zone and they pull it out and the clock's ticking and then they decide to try to run their zone set and guys are all over the place and you know and then all of a sudden now you're fighting a, a low shot clock so I always say it's if you can get an early or a late shot out of a, a, a out of a zone you've probably uh, done something good in it. Yeah I mean I think uh, he's been really good and he continues to grow get better uh, and I, you know, I don't know. I think I think um, you got to have some type of uh, limited expectations. You know, when he sat out for so long, you know, you didn't know uh, how healthy he was actually going to be, how rusty he was going to be, how much he was going to play, all those things. So I would say, pretty happy, right? Pretty happy. Pretty much exceeded uh, uh, probably my baseline expectations. And again, the bi the biggest thing to me is I can I continue to see growth. Uh, Getting used to what we do, scoring more uh, buckets out of our out of our offense. Getting used to his teammates a little bit more. Uh, really making the right play a lot more too. You know, he's seeing a lot of attention. Obviously, a little more maybe than he's even used to or, or had. And he's just growing um, game by game with, with making the right read. When you talk about him being close or even ready to have you know, restrictions removed, hard back to back, is it just kind of pure excitement to you know let him? Un yeah, I think uh, you know. Again, we're we're still a, uh, almost to the halfway point here. I think um, I'm still not in any big hurry. Although I think we're to that point where we're going to probably just let him play. We've taken a lot of the restrictions off. I think it's been smart. I think we've handled it well. I think our team's handled it well too. We played played pretty good sometimes when he's out. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but we're excited. I, I'm, I'm most excited that I think he continues to show us more and more all the time, and I think there's still more to come. <laughs>